Good morning, New Hope Hawaii Kai. Thank you for being here with us again this morning. We're so excited to be here with you. Um, yeah, I do feel like the, the, the Lord has a word for us this morning. And uh, I think through this corona thing, I've just seen the Lord do a bunch of different things. And I think this morning he's highlighted, um, like what I've seen him do recently is, I think he is like breaking down the walls of uh, different churches. Like he is like unifying the body. He's making streams, different streams uh, flow as one river. And there is a blessing, the scripture says, that this spirit of unity brings. And uh, so this morning we're going to to worship as the as the body of Christ, as one body. This is how this song goes. This is the, actually the third verse. We'll start with this, and it goes like this. Do you feel the darkness tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streets? flow as one river to wash away our brokenness. Let's sing that one more time. Do you feel the darkness? And do you feel the darkness? Even this morning when all the saints join Yeah. 
tremble when all the saints join in one song and all the streams flow as one river to wash away our brokenness until we see that God's a move a time of jubilee is coming. We are going to return to Jesus. We watch you heavenly gates. Prepare the way of the risen Lord. Oh, yeah. Prepare the way. Go. and hold out your hands as we sing this next song. And if you can, just stop what you're doing and focus on this amazing grace in our lives. If you could just focus on what he saved you from, what he's blessed you with, about his goodness Lord we come before you with the heart of thanksgiving we thank you father for for sending your son Jesus to die for us to take our place so even now as we sing to you and we sing about you and we sing about all the amazing things that you've done and the things that you've given to us we surrender, God, to you. Even those areas right now that we may be even holding on to, those areas that we may have not given over to you. Lord, you are God. You are Lord of our lives. We have, we have made you Lord. We confess this. So take it, Lord, we surrender. 
We surrender our lives to you, Father. We lay our lives down. Thank you, Jesus. And all these pieces broken and scattered in mercy again.
help us to realize what that even means. That you laid your life down. I ask, Lord God, that as we even sing this, Lord, that it would change us. It would change the way we think. It would change the way we talk. It would change the way we live. God, I'm asking that we would have such a greater knowledge of what it means, of the fact that you laid your life down for me.
language is interesting, but when you consider the degree to which God loves and how different He loves compared to how we love, I mean, it, it seems bonkers. It seems so reckless. I mean, it's targeted. It's, it's specific. God knew exactly what He was doing. It was according to plan, and yet the freedom, the unconditional reality of His love for you and for me I mean, I don't even know if I, I would love me like that, and yet he does. I hope right now, as you're watching this, that you are overcome with the reality that God's love for you is so big, and it is actually in pursuit of you. He is pursuing you. Father, I pray right now that the overwhelming, never-ending love of God would reach right through this camera <laughs> into the device, the screen, the TV, the whatever of all of our friends and family watching right now. And I pray they would encounter you in a really special and unique way today. That's what we're praying for, church. Fresh encounter on Independence Day weekend. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, God bless you, New Hope. We are so glad that you're joining us for our service online. Man, it is so good to know that we can still connect this way. And I want to invite you, look, if you're joining us online for the first time, you should see at some point somewhere on your device or your laptop, 
Uh, there is some chats that's going. Hey, let us know who you are. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to engage with you. Service is so much more fun when we can engage it with each other, even if it's just like this. And in fact, if you're new uh, and you'd like to know how do I get connected even in the interesting season that we're in as a church, hey, we'd love to connect with you. Let us know. If you actually click that live prayer button, what you can do is click that prayer button and you can just give us some basic information, just your name and email, and we'll be able to follow up with you to get you connected and how you can maybe even jump into one of the events that are happening uh, at New Hope or even join one of our online or virtual small groups. And we'd love any way that we can get you connected. In fact, right now there's going to be a button up in the chat that you can click right now to join a virtual small group if you haven't done so already. Look, we don't want you to be doing life in this season by yourself, and however we can partner with you, that's what we want to do. Well, I'm Pastor Pat, and I have a, just a couple of announcements for us, and one of those has to do with our children's ark. Yes. Hey, look, we haven't been doing Children's Ark in person, but we have on-demand resources for you. That All you got to do is go onto our website and click on Children's Ark, and every week we have an updated Children's Ark class, all uh, categorized based on grade level and, uh, and based on your child's age. You can watch those together as a family anytime during the week, and they are updated every single week. So don't miss out on that. But another way we like to connect is after our first service, so in between our 8 a.m. and our 10 a.m. service online, we do a live Zoom call with our children's ARC. And so if you're part of our children's ARC and you want to join that live Zoom call at 9 a.m., hey, it's going to be a blast. So a button will pop up, and uh, if you want to join that live Zoom call to be able to jump in and see, uh, you know, Auntie Jean and some of the rest of uh, out in the children's arc, we'd love for you to join in on that. Hey, one other thing that we have coming up is our food drive. Yes, that is right. On July 11th, we are having a food drive, and you can find that information on our website, food drive, and you can just park uh, on July 11th, it's going to be right out here in front of uh, what used to be Tiki. So kind of like by UPS, right there you could drop off your canned goods. We know there are a lot of people in need, and we want to be a part of the solution. We want to be kokua-ing. That's not a word, but I'm making it a word. We want to take that seriously. We want to make sure that we have that kokua in our heart to take care of one another. So if you want to participate in that, hey, ask. You can you can. Uh, Email us, but get that information on our website, and you'll even see more information in the chat today. Okay, last thing I wanted to mention, and uh, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a, kind of a sad thing, but we're, <laughs> uh, normally this time during the year, we have our annual fishing derby, and I would just want to let everybody know that unfortunately this year we won't be doing our fishing derby. I know, it's like I can literally hear a collective Oh, from everybody all over Hawaii Kai, because this event literally reached hundreds and hundreds of families, and it was really the birthed out of the heart and the love of an incredible couple, Uncle Mike and Auntie Josie, and I want to just say thank you so much to them, because they poured their heart and soul into this in what would have been the 10th year, and so what we're praying for is next year we are coming back strong. Okay, but just wanted to let you know if you're, we've got some questions about if that fishing derby is coming up. Well, unfortunately this year, no, but we are praying and planning for next year to be rocking and rolling. Hey, last thing that I want to do before we just pray and get on with our service is say happy Independence Day. Thank you for current members and for you if you're watching, if you have served or are serving now, we want to thank you for your sacrifice and your choice to serve so that we can live in the freedom that we do here in this country. I want to thank you so much for your giving. You have been so consistent and so generous, and your giving has changed lives. It's helped people who have been in financial need. 
It's helped people with food, basic essential items. It's helped so many people across our community and even people that don't go to our community, go to our church. It's just been amazing. And so on the chat, you'll see, I want to give. Hey, if you want to continue to give, we please, we want you to because we know that generosity is actually an act of worship. And when we're able to do that and release those things to God, man, he just blesses us so much more back. So I just want to pray for us right now, and then we'll move on into our service. Father, I thank you so much that today we celebrate freedom. Lord, this weekend, that's what we do. We sell for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lord, I thank you for every tithe, every offering, every gift, every act of courtesy and generosity. Lord, you see it all. You see the ones that we know about, and you see all the ones that we don't even know. They're done in secret and are the generous hearts of your children. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you're a generous God, and we can trust you even in times like this. So, Lord, we love you, and Lord, would you take all of the things that we're doing, and would you multiply them so they're making a kingdom impact in Hawaii. Kai. In Jesus' name, amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, somebody say freedom as you're watching this right now. We're going to jump into this verse, and it's been the verse that we focus on throughout the duration of this Holy Spirit series, and it's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power, someone say power, power from on high. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word upon you is going to matter in today's message. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Hey, today is our final. We're capping off our Holy Spirit series with... Four keys to being filled with the Spirit. We're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. So, so important. Now, one of the reasons why we did this series is because, you know, we at New Hope Hawaii Kai, we believe that the Holy Spirit is in operate. He is in operation today. He's not just an experience. He's not just a great worship time or prayer time that we had. It's not just an event or an it. He's a person. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this, this study in this series on the person of the Holy Spirit and his work and his role in our faith and, and, and how he relates to the Trinity is because sometimes when you hear those words and maybe you come from a, a background of maybe a, a charismatic or a Pentecostal church and that could mean a lot of different things, I think sometimes based on our experiences or things maybe we've seen on TV, it gets lost in translation and so there can be some confusion, a little bit of, oh, I don't know what that's about. And so what we wanted to do is just say, hey, look, the power of the Holy Ghost is something that we absolutely need in our Christian life. We don't want him to just be kind of like the, the, the uncle that nobody talks to at the family potluck, you know what I mean? We want him to be an active participant in our daily life with Jesus. We want to bring clarity and even help to define language. And in fact, at this point, when we were putting this study together, I really want to give credit and thanks to the Church of the Highlands. Uh, Pastor Chris Hodges is a church out there. He has no idea who I am, but we've engaged with some of his resources to help develop this whole series and to really help us to gain some clarity and some language so that we can equip our church and our families in uh, the reality of the Holy Ghost and what he has for us. So we're going to talk about three baptisms today, three baptisms before we talk to about, the, about the four keys of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Three baptisms. The first baptism is this, that we are baptized into 
the body of Christ. Baptized into the body of Christ. First Corinthians says this, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles. Some are slaves, some are free. But we've all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Now, salvation is that immersion, that full immersion into a relationship with Christ and his church. And in fact, John 20 says something. He talks about how the Spirit is in, was in the disciples. And those words are going to be really, really important as we go through this message. The in, the with, and the upon. So it says this. That Sunday evening, this was after Jesus like rose from the dead, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they are scared for their lives, okay? They're afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was there standing among them. Dude is just walking through walls now. Peace be with you. Can you imagine that? No, no. you just popped through a wall, man. No, not peace. Stop doing that, you know? No, peace be with you. Then he says, he spoke, he showed him the wounds in his hands and in his side. Then, after they were like, whoa, it's Jesus, they're filled with joy when they saw with the Lord. He said it again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And then he breathed on him and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. At this point, the scholars, a lot of scholars say this is the point, this could be the very point where the disciples were saved, where, where that transforms, their belief in Jesus was sealed with the Spirit of God in them. They were clothed with Christ and in Christ. See, because you receive the Holy Spirit when Jesus is received as your Lord and Savior. And in fact, Luke will talk about this a little bit too. He says, he opens their mind to the Scriptures and he says it's written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. He's kind of going over this thing that he said over and again to the disciples. He says, yes, there's forgiveness of sins for all who repent, and you are my witnesses of this. And now I'm going to send the Holy Spirit as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Some translations might even say, comes upon you, fills you. So right now, here's what we know. The disciples, they know Jesus. The disciples believe in Jesus. And with that belief came a filling in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was with them. The Spirit of God was in them. But notice the language here. I'm going to send you until you have been clothed with power. Even though they received the Holy Spirit, they had yet to be immersed in this way. Notice the future tense language here. In a few days, I will send you. It hasn't happened yet. Something else is about to happen. And in fact, he just says it again in Acts chapter 1 when he talks about like the 40 days that Jesus is going around like appearing to people, giving some last instructions. Essentially, it's the same event with some different detail. But what he says is, don't leave Jerusalem until my Father sends you the gift that he's promised. See, John baptized with water, but in a few days, I am going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, baptize in the Holy Ghost. Come on. That's what he's talking about here. They are going to be immersed in a whole new way. Now, let's talk about this next baptism, okay? So they're baptized into salvation, right? That's our first baptism, into the body of Christ. Second, water baptism. That's what we're going to talk about is water baptism. Water baptism is significant. It's simple enough it's that outward expression or that outward demonstration of the inward work of Jesus in our life. Those who believe, this is what happened in Acts, what Peter said, all were baptized and they were added to the church that day. 3,000 people start getting baptized right at the birth of the church. Now why? Well, it's because those private decisions need to be made publicly. Private decisions need to be made publicly. Like, imagine this. Like, imagine me saying, babe, Tara, I love you. 
But, and I actually, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I am super interested in like doing life with you. I just don't want to tell a whole lot of people about it though. You know, like, like I love you. Oh, I just love you so much. But don't go around telling people about it, okay? Like, like it's none of their business. I don't want people getting in my business. No, no, no. That would not fly well with my incredible wife. She'd be like, boy, you better put a ring on this. You better be telling everybody that you love me, okay? And so here, here's the deal is that when we have a moment with Jesus, a moment of decision, a life-transforming gospel moment, that moment has to be lived out in a public way. In Matthew, it says, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth I'll also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But anyone who denies me on earth, I'll also deny before my Father in heaven. Look, water baptism is one of those things that it is a demonstration. It's that next step of obedience to say, you know what? My old life is dead and gone in that watery grave, and I have come up a brand new creation. The old things are gone, and the new thing has come. Come on. It's one of the things that I, 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 I miss so much even about this season is, is being able to gather as we do normally out at Monolua Bay. Our tents are out there and people are just immersed in the water, coming up, declaring publicly their covenant, their commitment, their relationship to Jesus. Well, the last baptism we're going to talk about is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we have the baptism into the body of Christ. We have the baptism in water, water baptism, and last is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all right? Remember, the disciples had received the Holy Ghost at this point, okay? They were saved, but Jesus was saying, there is something else that I have for you. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people in Samaria had accepted God's message, now this is a powerful moment. We're jumping from Acts 1 to where Jesus is telling them about this, to some time later in Acts chapter 8 where the gospel has gone out and yet Paul comes upon some people and they say as soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. And this is why. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. You'll notice that language in the New Testament in particular when people are having encounters with the Holy Spirit is that People have been with, God has been with people. God was in the disciples. But now there's this unique moment. It's a distinct moment where the Holy Spirit is falling upon people in power. And things are happening. The Holy Spirit had yet to come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, they received the Holy Spirit. Come on, they laid hands and they received, the Holy Spirit came upon them. Now look, I grew up in a charismatic church. I've been in a lot of those meetings. Man, a lot of hands being laid on. And you got to be honest, sometimes I've been to a few meetings where it wasn't just laying hands on. People were getting pushed down and right on the forehead. It was like, whoa, whoa, calm down, bro, okay? Well, that wasn't one of these moments. This is a genuine article moment of power where the Holy Spirit is just overwhelming people. And in fact, they were empowered more to witness. This matters. In Acts 1, 8, you'll be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit power is coming upon you to do what? To be witnesses to Jerusalem, to, to Judea, and to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Stuff that, like the power of the Holy Spirit empowered and enabled Paul to reach people with the gospel in a new way. This is, this is wild to me. It was, I'm sorry, it was Peter and John. It empowered them to go to Samaria, a place where they would have had racial tension with, a place where they would have had religious tension and disagreement with, and yet now they're there and they're preaching the gospel in Samaria and people are getting saved, people are getting healed. Things are happening, family. This is that hap These are the results of what happens when the Holy Spirit fills us and comes upon us. In Acts 19, a similar conversation is happening. Then what baptism did you experience? And they said, well, Paul, we, we got that baptism of John. 
And Paul said, look, John's baptism called for repentance from sin. And that was necessary. But John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. And as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Notice that word, came upon them. And when, they sp- when, they, when that happened, they spoke in other tongues and they started prophesying. My goodness. So the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon them. And now they're experiencing this deep immersion in a way that they hadn't before. Look, now they're, it, what's interesting about these three baptisms is, is there's two baptisms that require us to do something, right? There's the water baptism, that, and that actually we, we're actually demonstrating, we're actually doing an act to respond to God's work. We're, we're, we're going under. We're, we're, we're being baptized. Second one, that baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's where we are being empowered to go accomplish the works that He has set out for us to do. And, and even the Bible talks about that. It's by grace that you've been saved through faith, not of works, so that none should boast. But later in that verse, it says, so that you can accomplish the good things that God has prepared in advance for you to do. The other one, the baptism into the body of Christ, that's something we can't earn, we can't accomplish by ourselves. Jesus did that for us. Just some interesting, you know, kind of like processing on, on some of these distinctions of, of baptism. First John kind of ties some of these things together when he says, And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by His baptism in the water, by the shedding of His blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood and the Spirit who is truth confirms it with this testimony. So what? There are three that testify. The Spirit, the water, the blood, and these three agree. Now John called Jesus the Word a lot, okay? And, and, and there, we, we see this even in Scripture, this unity of, the, of this understanding of the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And what it boils down to is this. This is a simple journey to go after everything that God has for us. We just want to go after everything that Jesus has for us. Look, I I think the last couple of weeks I've been telling stories, one particular story about me at 16. Look, I'd been going to a church for a while. My dad and my mom ended up, uh, we ended up going to this church in California. And actually, it's the church that my brother actually pastors today. And, and I was 16, and I've mentioned that a couple times during this series, but I haven't really mentioned what happened after that night. I mentioned, like, the sister wailing and weeping and moaning in the corner and the uncle going wild and prophesying and worshiping and me being kind of weirded out. I, I mentioned that I was overwhelmed by the presence of God that night, and, and not only was I saved, but something happened to me that I, can't, I still can't explain. And this is what I mean. The fruit of the Spirit began to show up in a brand new way. Look, I believed in Jesus, but all of a sudden, I was emboldened to share my faith with my friends. 16-year-old kid at school now saying, hey, man, you got to know Jesus. Like, this needs to happen. This is like urgency. I started sharing my faith wherever I went. Brought my Bible to school. Some kids would make fun of me. I'd be like, I don't even care, man. Let's talk about Jesus. All of a sudden, there was this boldness and this excitement. I sensed the urgency of what I felt like God was doing in my life and what he wanted to do because his love is so big. It just wasn't for me. It's for everyone. And so then what I ended up doing is I got with a couple other friends who are, they're kind of Jesus switch, kind of got turned on. And we started doing this on-campus ministry. We're just high school students just running around crazy. And we start studying the Bible. We start praying for our friends. We start sharing the word. And next thing you know, we're doing crazy outreaches. We're just getting pizza and throwing sodas all over the place. What happened next in the next couple of years was so wild because there would be 200, sometimes more students that would gather on campus and we would share the gospel, all students. There wasn't an adult around. I don't even know where they were or what they were doing, okay? I just know this is what was going on. Look, it, people, kids were getting saved. They're giving their lives to Jesus. Kids even got healed. Like, if you would have seen me, 
my sophomore year and then seen me my junior year, it would have been totally different. Like in my sophomore year, I try to hit those high school parties like everybody else, you know, try and be in the cool spot so I have a cool story on Monday. But now, my junior year, I showed up at the party, but I'm trying to preach Jesus at the party. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wanted me there. I was just there. I'd be like, oh, man, what's up? I had some friends. This guy's trying to, like, make some play on a girl over here. Hey, what's up? And I'd be like, oh, man, you don't need all that mess. You need some Jesus, bro. All of a sudden, I wasn't getting those party invites anymore, you know? Like, we would just go into these places, and, and all of a sudden, it was so different in me. Why? Because I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it didn't stop there. Got out of high school, and I, I, I started, you know, in my different jobs. I, I, I preached the gospel wherever I went. All of a sudden, I'm working as a personal trainer at 24-hour fitness, and I'm, I'm praying, laying hands on clients, just saying, hey, man, how can I pray for you today? Just praying for them while they're trying to work out their core doing some, some chest press. And I'm like, bro, here's what you need. You need to press that Jesus. I don't know, that sounded weird. I'm sorry. Look, all I'm saying is that something changed. And it wasn't because I, I had like a mental ascent or a philosophical realization. The power of Jesus transformed my life. The power of the Holy Spirit. And I was praying for coworkers in the parking lot and they're accepting Jesus. Now, all of that has very little to do with me and every bit to do with Jesus at work in the life of a broken kid who he was healing day by day and is still healing now. The power of the Holy Spirit. You guys got to remember, I, I, when Peter was at the crucifixion of Jesus, like he's, he's at those night trials, right? Jesus is being accused, all these things. You remember that moment when Peter was at the fire outside that trial and that little girl came up to him and was like, hey, weren't you with Jesus? Like we have to remember that at this moment in time, Peter didn't have the courage to even stand up or be honest with a little girl. In fact, he starts going off. He starts cursing and getting all crazy. He's like all scared he's gonna get called out. That was a, that was a significant moment in Peter's life because he denied Jesus. 50 days later, that same Peter, being the Holy Spirit come upon him, filling him to overflowing, is now preaching the gospel, testifying to Jesus, to thousands of people. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians says it like this, <laughs> don't be drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. <laughs> Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why would it say that? Well, it's because we don't want to seek out fake experiences by seeking pleasure that isn't actually going to satisfy our soul or getting blasted drunk just because we're trying to blow off some steam or something like that. No, no, don't get drunk on wine. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. So here's the first step. Here's the first key, being filled with the Spirit. Number one, remove all barriers. God has more steps for us to take, but we're only going to get there if we let God remove the barriers in order for us to, to take, like we got to remove. What, what, so what's blocking? Sorry, I'm getting, what is in the way? Is it our discomfort? Is it maybe a pridefulness? Are we just not ready yet to surrender more like we're good? We, 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 I'm okay with Jesus, but, and I know there could be more, but I know I'm okay here. And maybe Jesus is inviting us into deeper water with him. So what's the barrier? Is it that we're going to get uncomfortable? Did we have a painful experience? Whatever the barrier is, we need to give it to Jesus crazy thing happened to Peter is when he's preaching the gospel and everybody is so blown away by this moment on the day of Pentecost, now they're cut to the heart and they're like, what do we do? You're telling us all this amazing stuff, man, but what do we do? And Peter just says this, repent. <laughs> Each of you have to repent for your sins, turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises to you, to your children, to those far away, and all who have been called by the Lord our God. 
That's to you and me. To you, your kids, your kids' kids, and anyone else that God will call. Remove all barriers. In fact, right now, you have the time. Maybe in your home. Maybe you're watching this in your car. You're outside. What is that thing that has been in the way? It's been in between you and Jesus. Let's remove it so that we're ready and prepared to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the second key. It's, just this, it's really simple. You just got to ask. Request the gift of the Holy, the Holy Spirit. You got to ask for it. Pray. What, here's the simplest prayer ever. God, whatever you've got, that's what I want. Whatever you have for me, that's what I want. Don't filter this through what is normal. Like, we don't want to ask, God, would you just give me what I need so that I can live, uh, you know, a, a life that, that, that is just like, just super normal and doesn't bother anybody, doesn't do anything wrong. Like, we need to think through a bigger lens, a supernatural lens. We need to remember that we believe in a faith, a faith that says we have a God that came to earth as a man, lived a life, a perfect life, died a real death, rose from the dead. This isn't a metaphor. This is what we believe. This is a supernatural reality of the resurrection of Jesus. If you take the resurrection away, we have zero to stand on in Christianity. We believe this. And that power that raised him from the dead is the same power that you and I have access to in the Holy, whoa, in the Holy Ghost. I hope you're feeling that right now. I hope you're sensing the reality that your faith is not just supposed to be a tame one. It's not just so that we can have nice services and be nicer people. Your, your faith is supernatural. And I think it it could be so dangerous for us if all we have settled for is a tame faith. If all we have settled for is a nice service or a nice study where nobody really gets to know us and nobody really gets to ask us hard questions about what's really going on in our life. No, we have a, a never-ending always pursuing love of God that wants to get into every area. But we need to ask for it. We got to ask for it. Have you asked? I pray right now that, you're, that you and I are stirring up in a fresh way. Like it is awakening our soul into something that is bananas, okay? Okay, so here's the deal. If you sinful people, this is what Luke says. <laughs> Bible is so funny to me sometimes. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your kids, if you broke and bust up people know how to do this, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? If you feel like you've been going through the motions of faith, You've been checking the box. You've been doing your devotions. You follow the soap reading. You've done all, you've checked all of the lists, but you trying harder is not fixing the problem. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Surrender. I think sometimes in Christianity, we just think if we're more disciplined, then we're going to get there. If we're more disciplined and, and we, we accomplish more things, then Jesus will like us better. We'll get the bliss, blessings that we want and we'll get the breakthrough that we deserve. Here's the thing is we don't deserve a breakthrough. All of this is by God's goodness. We don't need to try harder by works. We might need to surrender more. We might need to just say, God, I got, I got a couple loaves and a couple fish. Remember that story? Like that kid and just here. And we might have to trust what God will do with what feels like such limited resources. Request the gift. Here's the third key. Receive him. Come on, receive. 
Somebody say, receive by faith. That's what we have to do. Now, I don't always like this part. Actually, I really don't like this part. I don't like this. There's a lot of this by faith stuff that makes me uncomfortable. But it's how he rolls. So that's how I got to roll with him. It, it's, it's, take, it's us taking a leap into what's unknown, even scary. But Hebrews will say, it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him has to believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So are we seeking him? Romans says, 10.9, if you declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, here's the deal. Boom, you're saved. Jesus knows your heart. He knows what's going on in the inner workings of your heart and your life. And you just need to receive him by faith, that baptism into his family, but even the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive it by faith. God, I ask for your power to be a better witness to your love in my life. I want it. If something's missing, I don't know, just feel whatever's missing in my life, in my faith. Come on, those are powerful prayers. Here's the last one, last key. Remove all barriers, request the gift of the Holy Spirit, receive Him by faith, and here's the last one, relate to Him daily. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May He be with you all. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That word, that, that, that connects us to relationship. That connects us to intimacy. That's not just a once a week thing or a couple times. That's like a daily encounter. And that's why I want to encourage you. Hey, look, let's not neglect the basics of our faith. Let's get into our daily devotions. Let's set time aside where we're listening for the Spirit of God to talk to us through His Word. Journal that stuff. Hey, follow along in our devotional plan. Grab a life journal And we'll get it to you, even if you're from far away. Hey, if you need help, we would love to resource you. But relate to Him. Find those times where you can worship freely. Find those times where you can pray. And sometimes that might sound like talking. But sometimes your prayer might just be quiet. Just saying, God, I'm going to wait here until I hear something from you. Sometimes those have been the most meaningful prayers that I've ever prayed. Look, I want to encourage you. We're going to pray. We're actually going to pray for those that need to maybe make a decision to follow Jesus for the first time. And we're also going to give some language to actually uh, pray. You can pray for yourself or you can pray even for your family to be filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of times in a moment like this, what I would love love to do is have a ministry response time where we could have our prayer teams and we could just pray for people right there, lay hands. But you know what? Jesus would stretch out his hand and healing would break out. So here's what I want you to do. You got a couple hands. Why don't you lay hands on yourself? (laughs) Look, everybody wants a mountaintop. Everybody wants a mountaintop faith. But it's in the valley. It's in the valleys that we're in right now where the river of God flows. I know we want those high, high moments of experience and encounter. But we have to remember in the valley, sometimes it's in the valley of the shadow of death. That's actually where the river is. And where the river is, that's where his presence is. Look, there's this cool picture in Ezekiel. And he talks about this river that's coming, it's flowing out of this giant temple. This is in Ezekiel 47. And what's crazy about this picture is like this, this temple and there's rivers coming out and there's life everywhere. There's trees, there's fish, there's all kinds of creatures, there's all kinds of plant life and living life. And in, in verse 9 it says, wherever the river flowed, the life was there. And it's a picture of God's presence teeming with life 
giving life. And in fact, the leaves on the trees in this picture, the fruit, it would bear leaves of healing for the nations. It is a picture of a total restoration of humanity. It's God's design and His heart. It's what He's wanted for us to be restored to Him even in our broken circumstances. At what point, he says this, this angel takes Ezekiel and he, he takes him along the river and he says, hey, come out to the river, man. And the water goes up to his ankles. And he measures like 1,700 feet or so and he, he says, come out a little bit further. And this time the water was now up to his knees. And after another like 1,700 feet, it was up to his waist. Then he measured another 1,700 feet. And, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. Look, I heard a pastor kind of say it like this. If you receive Jesus in your life, look, ankle deep is all you need. But what I want to encourage you is maybe... Go from the ankle deep. And some of us need to go ankle deep today. But some of us need to get in that water up to our knees. And maybe if that's going to be in this last song of worship that we'll do, maybe that's you raising your hands, even in your home. Yeah, even in front of your kids. Even if your kids are like, what's dad doing? It doesn't matter. You're just worshiping. What an example. Some people get into that, that knee deep. But notice this. You're wet. In that picture, you're wet, but you're still in control. What I want us to do, and what I want to challenge us to do, is step into some waist-deep water with the Spirit of God. In fact, I want us to go all in to the point where, yeah, it might be scary to surrender that much control to the Spirit of God in our life. But I'm telling you, family, there's nothing better. Let's not settle for the trinkets of the world. When there's real treasure, there's real treasure in Christ. There's real treasure that'll satisfy your soul. Something that success can't fill. Something that perfect health can't fix. Something that money in the bank won't be able to satisfy. It's because it's a soul craving that only Jesus can satisfy. And so right now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, the prayer is so simple. It's Jesus. I'm saying it with my mouth. And you can say it. Say it out loud. Jesus, you are God's son. And you are Lord. Forgive me. That's that repentance part. Forgive me for my sin that has separated me from you. Forgive me, Jesus. Remove every barrier, God. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can have abundant life. And if you said that, and you prayed that, and you believe that, you're saved. And if you prayed that prayer right now, there's a button that's going to come up in the chat and we want to follow up with you. It says, I committed my life to Jesus and one of our hosts would love to follow up with you in that next step. But here's the other prayer. It's Jesus, fill me fresh with your Holy Spirit. And in fact, I know it's a little different today, family. We got moving camera angles. We got all kinds of things that are happening today, right? Look, maybe put your hand on your heart. It's okay. It's Independence Day weekend. You'll look patriotic, okay? Maybe get with your maybe get with your children. Maybe it's you and your wife. Maybe it's you and your husband. Maybe it's a hand on a shoulder or a head or a, a heart. And what you're asking is you're just saying, Jesus. I need to be filled fresh with your spirit. I don't want a tame life. I don't want a life revolving around sin management. 
I want the power of the Holy Spirit to change me like it's never changed me before. So remove every barrier. And I'm asking, fill me fresh. And you might, you might just speak in tongues as you worship. You might just prop, you might just speak words of life and encouragement. A word of scripture might begin to come to your mind that you're going to pray over your family. A, a picture that you can see in scripture might come up. Look, fill us. God, I ask you would fill whoever's watching this with your Holy Spirit. I pray for healing. I pray for power. I pray for changed lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, fam. Hey, look, if you prayed that prayer and you feel like God did something, we want to hear about it. Let us know in the chat. Email us. Connect with us on our website. We want to connect with you. Tell a small group leader. Talk about it this week. Hey, we are closing our service. Thank you so much for joining us. But as we do, we're going to sing this last song of worship, which means you don't have to go anywhere. You could worship along with us. Thank you, New Hope. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so.
No. Mm-hmm.